Hey guys, well, it's a snowy day at Tumbleweed Ranch and we have a fun video for you because here I have a brand new Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, but I also invited my friend Jay and he brought his Gladiator that's been a little bit built up here to Tumbleweed Ranch and we want to just have some fun. Jay has never been here, so I propose this. How about a snowy drag race and maybe even a little bit of a tug of war. So let's get going. I'm not moving! I'm not moving! <laughs> Let's try the tug of war. How about this? Three, two, one, and pull. This truck is a fully stock Pro 4X kind of a top of the line model, stock suspension and stock tires. These are Hancock Dynapro AT2s and it has a rear locker. The tires are pretty decent. I think uh, this truck can put up a fight. This episode is also stock versus modded truck, gasoline powered versus diesel. <laughs> so this is really not apples to apples at all. This truck Jay brought and it's on 37s. It's got modified suspension. Uh, it's got an eco diesel under the hood. It's got a dirt box set up in the back and we'll show it to you completely in this video. All right, Jay, well, thanks for coming out, first of all. Yeah, senor, that, that pink slip for that there sweet little brown car you're riding better be mine by the end of this. What did you call me, brown car? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, the little brown pickup. No, no, dude, it, it's the popular new color, okay? Um, so, how about this? Uh, we'll do two drag races. First drag race will be a two-wheel drive, just for fun. Oh, this whole thing is for fun. And then we'll do proper four-wheel drive lockers. Sounds like a winner. If I don't do well in this, then I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna buy an old Geo Metro from here on out. Okay, we're ready. Come on. Uh... No. I'm not moving. I'm not moving! I'm not... Yes, can you push me? Uh... Uh... No... Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, here! All right, Jay, so I guess my brown car didn't move. <laughs> it is a good looking brown car, though. All right, so let's reposition a little bit and do a proper four wheel drive. Yeah, that was two wheel drive is pretty bad. <laughs> All right, Jay, so you brought your Gladiator here to, to Tumbleweed Ranch. Can you show me some of the features? Let's start with the Jeep itself, and then I want to learn more about the dirt box <laughs> conversion. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, all right, well, what's nice is this is one of our more kind of stockish vehicles. It's, okay. uh, we just, it's a 2021 Jeep Gladiator turbo diesel. We just did a little Banks kit on that guy to bump up the power and, and whatnot, just a tiny bit, just okay. to be a little more snap so okay. we could square the thing up in the jumps in the uh, couch pound. So it's a three liter V6, three liter uh, V6. eco diesel, and of course, eight speed, right? Yep, it's got that auto eight speed. Okay, so then, and did it start as a Rubicon, I see? It did, okay. it did. We started as a Rubicon, and the only thing we did on the drivetrain upgrades is basically the front axle shafts. We went to a set of RCVs uh, and then trussed up the housing, and one of the reasons for doing that is obviously to, uh, you know, not, hopefully not break the front axle, but running in the snow and on the road, those U-joints bind up the steering wheel all the time. So now uh -huh. I've got CV joints, which is great. So I've got this nice smooth action when I'm in four-wheel drive and cruddy weather like today. So can you point to that? I mean, can, sure, we, yep. can we actually So you reach... can kind of see back over. It's the red one. Yep, it's, it's this red... little red cup. Well, where's the best spot? Hiding right up in there with all the grease on it. That's your CV joint. It's a Burfield st style CV joint. Just like Toyota guys and Suzuki and Galindewagen, all those guys run a CV like that. Okay. But on the Jeeps, they're an open knuckle, 
So you can't just have a regular CV. So uh, CRV has devised a way to do that by having that, that plastic-like cup, rubberized plastic cup that holds all the grease in it. Okay. And they're tough. They're really tough. So they shouldn't break. Drive so, train-wise, And yeah. you maintain lockers, obviously, front and rear. So the cool thing is with the Ruby, it already has a factory yeah. front locker. We got the rear locker. We have the push button disconnect sway bar. Um, we try to leave it like this is kind of a vehicle you could buy and with light tweaks too, because you've seen so many Jeeps that they well, call it go Jeep. crazy. Yeah, they go on crazy. 40s or whatever. And they just change it so much that it really is just different than how it started too what much. What about this? So, yeah, we did a real, we were trying to come up with, we housed a 12,000 pound uh, worn winch in there. Okay. Which is a little bigger than most, but just because we tend to get in more trouble than most, it seems like that's my yeah. my uh, uh, the way yep. my mo. <laughs> yes. But uh, what we did is we made a very lightweight bumper that is only 27 pounds because we're trying to keep the vehicle as light as we can without all the excess weight on there. But we, if you notice, we mounted this thing foot first, so we're actually pushing against that instead of against uh, pulling in shear on those uh, the aluminum feet. What is going to happen later on is we're actually going to cut out a slot down through here. So if it's really bad because we're wound over the top, which is okay when your feet first, I can run that cable down under the skid plate and under the vehicle and out the back if I don't have two winches, which eventually we'll probably So will. is this your design? or Yeah. Okay. Yep. We just fab this up on the uh, a long weekend because <laughs> I couldn't find, I just couldn't find anything that was, there's so many nice uh, bumpers out there, but they're heavy. And even the uh, aluminum ones are a steel base frame underneath them with the Ugh. aluminum over it. So 27 pounds, it's out of the way. Now I went with the cheap little tow hooks like this, um, not because we're cheap, but because they're light. Because okay. we were gonna water jet some large uh, tie points, real thick guys here, uh -huh. but it's all about weight, all about weight, and this okay. is simple and easy. <clears throat> all right, so let's keep moving backwards. Um, it looks like a stock rock rail here. Is that true? It is a stock okay. rock rail That's now. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, and it's it, I use them. Um, I don't know how long they're going to last, but I definitely use them. So then, um, a li what kind of a lift does this have? So we did kind of a combination. It's okay. a hybrid lift, I would say. Okay. So we're using uh, currently we're using Falcon shocks on there. Okay. Uh, because their valving's quite good. Road manners are good. They're a little short though. The fronts are definitely on the short side. Okay. The rears seem to be okay, but we're actually designing, we're building our own shocks right now. Some, uh, either a double or a triple internal bypass uh -huh. with a reservoir shock that we're gonna put on. We just got them in. But right now the Falcons handle phenomenal. They're great. Uh, they're a little short on the stroke, but we did a, um, oh gosh, not a carling. The, the A-arms, these huge control arms. Um, Oh, I see. That yeah, looks, looks kind of massive. Yeah, they are massive because we're looking at doing portal axles. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> we're looking at doing portals on this thing, possibly. Okay. So we ended up doing the larger control arm. We made our own little skids for this portion. And then this is an Artec uh, 6061. They claim it to be 6061 uh, skid plate for the whole thing. Uh -huh. And we use it hard. I mean, this wheelbase is so long. I think I'm 137, almost 138 inch wheelbase. Uh -huh. So uh, the control arms are beef. They're using like a Johnny joint on one end and whatnot. Uh, and we went a little overkill just because we thought we might be doing those portals in the not so distant future and for just hitting them on things. Because I didn't want to get the thing lifted too high because I don't want to ruin our road manners. This is our road trip vehicle and our kind of explorer. So what is it, like two to three inches lift? It maybe? is actually three and a half to four. Okay. And then, um, then it's a 37. 37, yeah. Okay. It's a 37-inch tire. And we went with just a cheap, inexpensive uh, Chinese 37-inch tire, and we siped them. And I'll tell you what, I'm really pleasantly surprised. They're well, really quite good. Well, we'll find out more because we'll be doing <laughs> a little bit of drag racing, okay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, I may and, be eating my words on and, that and, one. And pulling. All right, Jay, so what was happening is first the traction control system was killing me. Um, and then I disabled it and I was able to move, but it wasn't pretty. Copy, yeah, I gotta, I'll turn off my traction control too. That's a good call. <laughs> and this is now for pink slips. Ooh, now it's getting serious. Well, I am kidding, you know. <laughs> I think your built-up Jeep is a little bit more, worth more than the Frontier. All right, I think I am uh, good, yep. All right, dude, so I had to go to four low to get my locker to kick in as well. Yeah, we're both at low and my rear diff is locked. All right, Jay, so how many million pounds does your Jeep weigh? I have the advantage of weight for traction, but slowing down my acceleration, so I am probably 6,400 pounds, my guess. 
Whoa, I'm like 4,600 pounds. So you have the power to weight ratio advantage. I should have the gravity to earth traction advantage. I also have a horsepower advantage. I have 310 horsepower, and but you have the torque advantage for sure. Yeah, it's got some grunt, and you know what? That could almost be a negative in this lack of traction situation though, you know? Well, dude, I think it was close. I was losing a little bit of traction. I think you just had, you were digging a little bit better. Yeah, I'm impressed, man. The Nissan went, uh, she scooted right along. Oh, well, uh, all right. Well, how about this? Um, I want to learn more about your truck, but next up is the um, tug of war. We started another little company called Dirt Box Overland. Okay. And that is for, yeah, we, we blasted off the decals. Um, we armor all this the boxes. This was at um, CES, right? Yep, Consumer Electronics Show. Okay. Um, so we we armor all everything, and then my buddy put the decal on over the armor all. So as you can see, it didn't quite stick very That's well right. after the bath. But if you want me to open her up, I'll show yeah, you some of the let's, goodies. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's so this guy it. here flips up through that guy. We've got our illumination here, but this is kind of cool because you got a bunch of goodies in here. Control system there for lights on and off, battery disconnect. We actually have a 12 gallon water tank hiding down underneath here with a water pump set up in there. And then these are a few different connections for how we want to power our electric system. We've got solar, we've got truck power, we've got our Jackery unit, which is a lithium ion generator is what they call it. It's just a battery with uh -huh. a in, uh, inverter. And then I've got my mobile solar panels to add on to that as well, along with 300 watts of solar on the roof. But what's kind of slick is you've got these little goodies here. So here's another little lockable storage area. Here's my little sink setup for that guy for doing dishes and whatnot. Okay. But then, this is cool. This is like the, uh, this is like the erector set from him. Oh yes. So she drops down and then flips out here and oh. then flips out here and hiding in here i've got two stoves i've got an electric burner because i've got an outlet right there and i also have a propane one and a little sink huh yeah here's my little sink right through here yeah push that guy out and now since i'm you know shit what kitchen doesn't have a cordless grinder cutoff wheel <laughs> But <laughs> so you can sit so here. frozen yeah. uh, meat, I guess. <laughs> your frozen stuff. And then this guy comes out. I've got it plugged in to the back. And then that tips down so I can go ahead and get that. Okay. So we make all these components for the dirt box stuff. Which so is, all the slides are kind of tilts. Yep. Tilts, that. this, that, drop downs. And you can put whatever you want on it. Okay. But it's cool. You know, hang out, doing your thing. When the weather comes in and, and you're like, oh, crap, we got to break camp fast. Show you, man, it's quick. The rule is you gotta be able to break your tent down within two minutes, which takes literally not even a minute. This guy goes in here, here. Bring that guy up. Did you build this box as well? Yep, or we make that whole, this okay. whole system right through okay. here. Lock in. Drop her down, lock. So later on, I'll have this with power locks through the whole thing. So now you just have your key fob and you can lock the whole system. It's labeled as gas, but it's actually diesel, water, which it truly is. It's actually deaf. <laughs> but what's cool, what's, what makes this different than most setups that you've seen, because yeah. this is going to look a lot like some of these things you see in Australia, but it's all modular. The whole thing's extruded aluminum. So all, who, who's the bed? Is this kind this of is our bed as well. Okay. So you could either have just the top set up. You could have the top with the bed. You could have the top with the tent, or we have a topper that integrates the tent where you can climb into it. But what's neat is this, you take these, unbolt this here and here, and on that side, the whole thing comes off. And then in these slots, I've got flip down sides, just like the Unimog. Okay. So now it's a work truck bed, which is really cool. And so then you can convert it. You can convert it to yeah. a full on work truck. I mean, storage is the key and keeping it low. So it's just good, man. Yeah. We got the your, factory your, sensors your in backup, there. Your backup sensors. Yes, and actually this is a cool, I think you guys will dig this. 
We run two spares. So that's a fully mounted spare tire right on that guy. 37? 37, yeah. You were able to stuff it in there? We did a slight modification to okay. one of the silencers on the uh, okay. exhaust, which didn't make it any louder. So now I can lower that thing down. But then, so if I'm in Baja, I rip a tire. I don't have a spare anymore for the rest of my two-week trip. This is another spare, but there's no tie, there's no rim. This, okay. we actually was, build this unit. I was unit. looking at this. It's like a storage. Exactly. Right? So you've got one half up here for storage in there. So it keeps it lighter and another uh, spot to stash goodies. So now whenever you finally get to a place where you can actually remount a tire, you still got a spare for the rest of your voyage, you know? So Jay, you have a Rubicon with red tow hooks, <laughs> but how about the Gen Y pulling hook? Only if the colors match. <laughs> Dude, and, this, and they do. <laughs> dude, this weighs like, I don't know, 20 pounds or something. And that's for a regular car like this? Well, no, it's just for trucks. Man, okay, my. so here, you use this. Okay. <laughs> I'll be using a, just a little shackle. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I think the Jeep might win. Just, you have a, if it you have, doesn't, I'm going to be... You have a weight advantage, dude. A huge weight advantage. Huge and advantage. I had a big lunge, too. Yes. But it's not helping me. All right, my friend. So the drag racing was close. Let's try the tug of war. How about this? Three, two, one, and pull. Copy that. I'm in low range, rear diff lock only, and uh, good to go. Same here. My heated seat is on. My phone is charging. I'm comfy. My steering wheel is heated. I've got my lights on, my rear locker, and I'm, I'm in four low. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. One, pull. Come on, come on, Nissan. All right, so what the, let's go outside and see. This is gonna be victory by inches. In fact, the entire event was move, a movement of only inches. <laughs> Wait, it's only, we only moved two feet. <laughs> Wait, so so from here, let's see. You have your tape measure, oh, yeah, but- I got the tape, let's get the tape. Let's get, let's get, let's get this is Olympics. Victory by inches. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. Really, the strap is right here. Ooh, two, two feet. feet. <laughs> Got the eye, man. The caliper eye. <laughs> A two-foot victory. I'll take it. All right. Cool. All right, well, thank Pig you slips. For... This is, you know, the same kind of story through here, but again, more storage, cleaner for the CES show because this thing really was nasty looking when we showed up through the snow. And then we've got tire chains for the MOG. <laughs> Just in case. The tire chains for the MOG. We've got the Jackery in it that we use for powering all of our stuff. So what we do is we plug this in, and this now activates my outlets throughout this dirt box unit. Okay. There's one over there for cooking. We actually have another unit for recharging our cordless tool batteries. And then on the rear, I've got another outlet for my electric blanket for when I'm sleeping up in the rooftop okay. tent. If really gets bad out like it was several weeks ago, yeah. We've got our little diesel fired heater. So these are cheap little Chinese heaters that work very well. We did some mods to it, of course, because we're, you know, that's what we do. Yeah. What's cool, it's got its own diesel tank. And then we did a modification to bring down the power from 18 to 12 volts. And you hook this guy, and now it's a standalone furnace. You can okay. put it in the back of your truck. We could put it up on the deck of the tent and plumb it into the tent. So you could literally camp it like 10 below zero, and it's it's pretty comfortable. How long does it last about fuel? As uh, far as... Easily eight hours. Okay. Eight so hours overnight, it could, overnight, it no could work. Yeah. And the cool thing too, the, you, you brought up a really good point. How's it la how long does it last? On this guy, the Jackery for the electric heat, however much wattage I'm putting out, it'll tell me exactly how long it's gonna go. Okay. So that is a really big deal for us because you wake up four in the morning it's like, Ugh, it's what terrible. am I doing? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. awful. So, but yeah, it really is handy. And like I was telling you, the modularity of this, when I smash the fender, which is going to happen, I could replace it. If I smash this toolbox, which shockingly I haven't yet, I only hit the very back end, I could replace this. I could change the bumperette setup. So everything is reconfigurable. So we do it for Jeep, 
We'll do it for that rig there. We're doing it for Toyota. We're doing it for Rams. The whole, you name it, man. Okay. But it's it's cool because everything's all. Look at how cruddy the weather is, and everything's all nice and clean in there. And then show me uh, the deck oh, yeah. up here, the, the, yeah. upper, the upper deck. Yeah, so what we do is whenever people have rooftop tents, you got this ladder you got to carry around all the time. So we actually bolted it on. We do a magnetic pin lock here, jerk it up, bring this guy down, and now you can sit there and climb upstairs. And then I can set up my tent, which is right up here, bring that up, climb in. And what you notice with most of these rooftop tents, you're like, you can't climb out of it. You're like down the ladder. Yeah. So this is cool. I can put my boots here. You can put your coffee out there. I've got the outlet there so I could brew coffee right next to it. Um, yeah, so she's hitting up. It's like a little perch. It okay. is. Yeah, it's my little perch. <laughs> and like I was, I was mentioning to somebody earlier, I've got L-Track here for tying stuff down. I'm gonna make a bracket where I could put a seat that rotates. I could just hang out like your little fishing seat area. Okay. So it's cool. And then we got 300 watts of solar on top of the tent. And then- And uh, this is like one of those uh, kind of pop- It is, yep. Pop open. She flips up and you climb in. I've got the electric heated blanket in there, usually a pillow and a few other goodies. And it's a dual layer. It's memory foam. And then we have a ventilation uh, set up underneath it. So the rock tank tent is ours that we build as well. It's our heaviest tent. We make our- Tellurique is a little lighter, and then we do the other two dirt box ones, which are light as well. Anyway, this is, I was going to say this is a little secret hiding place. Uh -huh. That's my fuel can. It's lockable, but you could hide two straps behind it, two two-inch uh, two straps for recovery. Okay. So pretty cool. So that guy actually, and it's all aluminum, weighs almost nothing. So can in there and recovery straps hiding in the back. Okay. So nobody even notices it. Until you now. saw it here first, <laughs> right? My here's my super secret thing that yes. nobody knows about. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a good little setup, you know. If you, with the reason we even started the whole Dirt Box brand, let's face it, not everybody's got a half million, three, you know, for a mog. For a mog, yeah, they just don't have it, and and you know the mogs are big. A lot of people just kind of want something small for a weekend or just traveling, fair weather stuff for you know a few weeks at a time. And it's fun, let's face it. Reconfigurable stuff is really nice and having something that fits your every drive through without having to use CTIS to get through it, <laughs> that's a plus. <laughs> and by the way, so how much weight, I mean, if you remove the stock bed, how yep. much weight change do you think there we, is? We gained, like here. we gained, so not including all the stuff on the inside, not including the tent and the stuff on the inside, let's do yeah, that. Yeah. We gained 800 pounds. So okay. it's a chunk, okay. but that's the whole flatbed. That's this whole topper setup. My ARE topper I had was several hundred pounds. It wasn't quite as heavy as this, but also this has got an enclosed floor on it so I could bolt everything to it. When, when we remove this, like it comes off as a unit and then the sides go on. I could also have another one that goes on that we're developing next that you'll like this. It's longer. It has an access door here that you could climb into, and then you can climb into the tent from the inside. And we're making it where all of our cooking gear is on both sides here. You could operate everything from the inside or it comes and swings down, you can operate from the outside. And if the weather gets cruddy, we could just hang out inside there and climb in and out of the tent without having to open the doors and freeze. Makes sense. But when you were building this, obviously you thought about the weight with the suspension, Absolutely. Right? So, so you can always, sometimes people just add stuff without yes. doing the springs, right? Yes. And, and that's yeah, not a good deal. It's not a good deal. And what we did, because we're not always going to be heavy. As you know, I'm removing this too, so I'm going to lose a bunch of that weight. So we just did airbags. That's what you saw hiding back here. I've got these little Schrader valves. We did one on the oh. left and one on the right, so I could inflate, and those are 2,000 pound uh, airbags, so they're supposed to give you that much capacity. So realistically, with the airbags put up to about 45, 60 PSI, you can't even tell. It's and beautiful. And there's your camera too. Yep. Reverse Still got camera. the factory rear camera in there. So we Sweet. try to try to make everything take it's it's we're trying to make it a full on bolt on kit for people. Nice. All right, Jay, I got kind of excited looking at all the features this has, but how much would something like this cost? Can you take me like step by step, like the bed, maybe the box, and gotcha. then the tent? Gotcha, okay. So yeah, you're right, because it is all modular. It's, it's so modular, it's, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you've got, just to give you an idea, okay. from, from here <laughs> to there, <laughs> with the solar, okay. and with the, the refrigerator, the kitchen, all that stuff, minus the lights, 
is just under 30 grand from here to there. Okay, so including the bed and bed, the dirt box. Topper and, and, and the tents. And the tents. And your choice of tents. They're all about, so about 30K. About 30K. So, you know, that's comparable to like if I went out and just bought a slide in. Yeah. You know, that's comparable to that price, which is kind of impressive, I it think. It is, and this is a lot tougher. You know, it's not going to rot out. It's all extruded aluminum through the whole thing. And it's so you've got the whole setup through there. Yeah. But then if you want to go, so say you don't want to go Rambo style with the bed. Okay. Because that's a commitment. Okay. <laughs> the, then you could actually do just the topper itself, which I think is around four and a half, five thousand, depending on which vehicle. Okay. Tents are typically three to thirty-three hundred dollars each. Okay. Or you do the topper tent combo where you could climb in from the inside and it's a much larger tent. Okay. And that is around I think sixty eight hundred for that okay. right there. Okay. And then when you do the bed, the bed's around eighty six hundred. And then you have a bunch of ancillary pieces in there. You've got an option for the extra water tank, the pump, et cetera, et cetera. But again, most people could get the full thing. What I would do is typically it's about an $8,600 setup where you could slide, put the topper right on your truck with a tent combo. With a stock bed. With a stock bed. Okay. And then what if somebody already had a lifted gladiator, let's say? I mean, oh, this, this could work with, with Absolutely. it, right? Absolutely. You put the okay. topper tent combo in okay. there or just the topper. Okay. You know, we've got uh, some guys over in the Netherlands that are getting them all for Ram 1500s and F-150s, the whole setup. So okay. they slide it. But, but if somebody had a stock Gladiator, can they just send it to you or sure. how would that work? So it, if you want us to do the whole install, absolutely could do that. It's kind of nice because we add some, we never do the same thing twice, which okay. is why I'm still poor. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> okay. we always do nice little tweaks along the way, little additions here and there. So we could absolutely do the whole turnkey setup. When you do the bed, here's the one important thing with the bed, besides storage and, and space, here's where the factory bumper is down here. Yes. You just smash that on everything. Now that that is gone, Departure angle. Departure, yeah. departure central. It's, I mean, the hitch is still in the loca stock still, location, stock right? location. You still kiss the hitch a lot, but okay. that kind of just reminds you where you are. Yeah. And you're not going to hurt it. So that can be removed, but I kind of, you know, with the factory spare down there and all that, it's kind of a good thing. If I want to go crazy. Plus, you could still tow if I you want to. Tow, yeah. yeah. And I, I have the factory cameras in there. I can see when I hitch up to it. If I want to go crazy rock crawl, yeah, we could get rid of this and get rid of that. Okay. But this is this is like this is a hardcore overlander rig, not just like a gravel road overlander rig. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I did. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it too. It's cool. It, it, it's it's kind of silly. It's it's kind of crazy to see how bad snow makes things. This yes. is like and it's ice, crazy. snow and ice. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But because yeah, you you digging down right with tires, but there's actually ice on the bottom of it. As so. soon as that thing rotates, instant ice. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Check out. Dirtbox, is there a website? Yeah, dirtboxoverland.com. Okay, and of course, ultfl.com for everything automotive. Thank you.